And again, welcome everyone to welcome this, to the stew, uh, the, the safety work group. Um, <laughs> again, this is being recorded. You should have a little, little something on your screen to tell you that <laughs> as a warning, but um, we're recording this so we can post it on the um, on the web after the fact. And let's uh, dive in. So before we dive in too far into today's agenda, we'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the tribal lands in California. As you all know, you're everywhere. <laughs> We're not all in one place, but <clears throat> the Cal EPA building and the hub of this work group is located in Sacramento. And Sacramento was and continues to be a gathering place for many local tribes who have lived throughout the Central Valley and the foothills for generations and were the original stewards of this land. These people include the Nisanan, Maidu, and Miwok people, and the Putwin and Wintu nations who have remained <clears throat> committed to the stewardship of this land over many centuries. And we're taking this time because it's important for us to recognize that our organization sits on the tribal lands of indigenous peoples and that we are here because of the sacrifices forced upon them. And acknowledging and remembering these communities now and in all the work we do, we hope to honor their legacy, their lives, and their descendants. And there's a link at the bottom <clears throat> if you're curious about um, the native land that you might be on. So that's kind of a cool application to check out. And with that, I'll pass the baton off to Jay. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the stew. Um, still getting used to that new acronym. Uh, let's start with the roll call and um, beginning with, we'll go down the list here on the screen, uh, starting with the peer review panel. Oh, Chris, it looks like you're muted. <laughs> Wait a minute. There, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes, this is Chris Schmidt, I'm here. Great. And looking to see if Harry's on the list. Um, so it doesn't look like Harry Ollendorf is on the call at the moment, or I'm not sure if he's gonna be able to join or not. And Bruce Monson is not able to join. Um, I told them it was optional because I've gotten comments from Chris and Harry, and we've talked about this report before, so um, it's just a short item today. So um, not a problem that uh, a couple of them are not here. Um, so next, EPA. Don't see Terry's name on the list. Oweeha. Uh, West Smith here. Great. Um, do you know if anybody else was going to join today, Wes? I, I believe Shannon was going to be on. Lori and Susan are both out. Oh, okay. But they won't be on. All right. Thanks. Moss Landing? Out of them. I think it's just me today. Oh. It's on city. Um, okay, let's go through the regions. Region one. Uh, Mary Bartholomew. Great. Region two. Gary Austin. Region three. Region four. This is Emily Duncan. Five. This is Robin Murad. And Jordan Great. Great. Region six. Hi, this is Kelly Huck. Hi, this is Laurie Scribe, also with Region Six. Great. Uh, region seven. Region eight. Nam Win. 
Great. And Region 9. Hi, Chad Laughlin here. Hi, Chad. Um, okay, State Board. Tessa Fogitz here. Tessa. Um, anybody else from the State Board? Corey Clatterbuck's here. Hey, Corey. That was Nick Martorano. Somebody else yep. talked at the same time, though? That was me saying hi to Corey. <laughs> uh, okay. Was Jennifer going to join today, Anna? I'm not sure. All right, have we got everybody from the state board? I see see another one. Allie's here. Hi, guys. <laughs> That's who I saw. <laughs> <laughs> OK, have I missed anybody? Hi, it's uh, are you in the other category yet? Yes, we're on the other other category now. Sure, Susan Little with Environmental Working Group. Oh, great. Welcome. Shannon Murphy with a Weha. Good morning. Hi, Shannon. Anybody Hi, else? I'm late. This is uh, Jessica Donald with the City of San Francisco. Great. Welcome. And I do see. I saw Sherry Norris from the California Indian Environmental Alliance in the chat. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so yeah, actually, I'm not even following the instructions here. <laughs> so so for, for the rest of you, add your name and, and affiliation into the chat box like Sherry, Sherry did. She's good at reading instructions and following them. <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> All right, so there, are, there is a list of, uh, you know, other folks that, have, that are on the call, so it's great to have the the nice turnout again. Um, so I think we're ready for the next slide. Okay, just a review of the agenda. It's a, a quick meeting today, um, and we'll we'll uh, you know, we're we're meeting quarterly now. So um, you know, we'll, our, some of our standard items. We'll do a, a round of quick updates on things in general, various items. Um, we'll have our our final discussion of the 2016 Lakes data report. Uh, we talked about it at the last meeting, um, but the report was not totally uh, drafted yet. Um, but uh, today, today you've had a chance to look at the draft, and we have a chance for discussion of any comments today, and then we'll reach closure on that. Anna is going to um, give an update on the realignment. Um, monitoring and this is another standing item and then we'll wrap up and adjourn. Short and sweet today. Any yeah. questions about the agenda? Anybody not able to stay on that I should know about? Jay, I'll be, this is Allie, I'll kind of be popping in and out but should be here for most of it. Okay. Jay, this is Chris Schmidt. You know, I have to leave. Absolutely not later than 1.30 my time. Okay. Um, but we're not supposed to go that long if I'm like, doing the yeah, math. Yeah, that's what they all say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Chris is uh, in Missouri, so. Uh, Let's, let's jump into it. Going to the next slide. Okay, so uh, quick updates, and um, we've got sort of the, the usual list of things. We go through the the various monitoring, the status of the various monitoring years that are are still active, and then um, touch on what's happened with advisories, TMDLs, the monitoring council and uh, other things further down the list. So I'll start things off. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, so we're wrapping up this 2016 report today, which has been kind of languishing, but um, after, uh, after we're done with this, um, I'll be caught up uh, and ready to, to take on the next report, which is the 2019 Bass Lakes. And uh, that ball is not in my court yet. Um, it's uh, with the state board, Jennifer Salisbury, who uh, does the QA review and gets the data sets um, uh, in order. And so I'm waiting for uh, Jennifer to um, to get get the data ready to go. And she's um, going to get me the data by the end of September. And then um, we'll have our our um, next meeting in October. And I won't be able to, you know, I, it's these these meetings are good sort of uh, targets to aim for for having the the reports to discuss. I won't be able to do it, you know, that quickly in October, but I'll shoot for the next meeting, which we haven't scheduled yet, but would be we we like to meet in late January, early February, according to our annual um, schedule. So that's when I'll be aiming to have a draft report on the 2019 Bass Lakes data. Um, 2020, um, we're uh, still. I think work working on analysis and managing the data. Autumn, can you say a, f a couple words about that? Sure. Um, so all of the mercury and selenium data have been reported, as well as all of the aging data. Um, uh, the previous contract lab for Swamp did the vast majority of the organics analyses, and Jennifer has those data already. There are some samples that um, kind of became ready during the time where we didn't have a contract yet. So I'm still holding on to those to send to our new chemistry lab. Uh, and they are working on a couple of things on their end so that they can receive them legally. And um, so hopefully those will be done really soon. And then Jennifer can get that data loaded. Great, thank you. Okay, and then we're uh, currently sampling doing our fourth round of bass lake sampling panel four uh, the fourth set of uh, 35 ish lakes out of our 190 lakes that that we're um, sampling uh, in, in these five different groups um, gary ichikawa has been he's been you know, for many years, he's been really good about sending the group updates on their latest activities. Um, and uh, they've they've been, I think, having um, making good progress on, on on sampling in spite of the severe drought conditions. Um, there have been some some lakes where uh, we've sampled fewer locations than normal because the lakes are so low. Um, uh, and then there have been a couple lakes where we haven't been able to sample, um, but um, overall, I, I'm, I think we're pretty fortunate to have gotten as many fish as we have so far. Um, I don't think Gary is on the call. Um, no, he's he's out sampling today, yeah. but I would like to also say that um, there's a couple lakes that we may not be able to sample this year because of the fires. So right. our teams were on uh, Union Valley Lake last week and were evacuated because of the Caldor fire. Um, and I believe, um, I think it's Lake Antelope Lake. Um, the whole area around it is, is or was burning. So depending on how that infrastructure comes back online, we may not be able to launch there. So we'll just have to play all that by ear. Um, you know, we're definitely keeping an eye out for new fires that pop up before our trips. We're having to reschedule things to avoid some of that and some of the heavy smoke conditions. And, um, you know, so just, you know, keep your good thoughts out for our teams and their safety. Yeah, absolutely. Safety is paramount. And um, it's hard enough to do this work when there isn't drought and fire. <laughs> raging across the landscape so um big thanks to the sampling crew for doing doing as 
the best they can out there. Um, okay, then um, I put 2022 on here because we're starting to think about next year. Um, one of the one of the reasons we need to think about next year is um, because we need to um, apply for the permit uh, for sampling for collecting the fish next year. And we need a good amount of lead time on that. So um, we are starting to, to uh, think uh, carefully about this. And we've talked about, uh, the, you know, there's still um, coast, coastal zones remaining that we uh, want to sample. It's part of the multi-year effort to sample the entire coast. So that's on our list um, with uh, input from Region 5 and also um, Region 5 is has uh, arranged to allocate some funds um, towards river sampling in support of the rivers TMDL. Um, so we're planning on doing some some river sampling next year and we're going to have a meeting with Lauren Smitherman at the end of September. Um, Anna and I um, in autumn to to talk about um, to get a better idea of what we can do uh, in terms of stations for that. And then we also want to start the realignment sampling next year. So um, in order to, to get the permits, we need to have our plans in place by December. Um, so we're aiming towards you know that timeline for getting the plan together for 2022. Um, Anna and Autumn, anything else? to say about that. that? That covers it. Well, we'll keep you all posted as, as more details and goodies come to light. Right. Yeah, I think at our next meeting, we can report back on our, our discussion with Region 5 and bring forward a, a clearer idea of what we want to do next year. Um, and, and also, we'll, we'll probably have some details from the realignment process at that point. Maybe, I don't know if they'll be totally figured out, but we'll be able to report something. Okay, um, so Anna, you've added um, something to the uh, agenda where you list the advisories that you've seen. So, um, so there, hopefully folks saw that. Maybe, you know, say a little bit about what you're doing with that, and then we can see if Wes has anything to add. Yeah, I just added those because uh, before I was involved in the BOG and I was a lowly <laughs> secret fellow, the fish consumption advisories announcements would go by really fast and I was having a hard time keeping track of them. And so as they kind of come into my inbox, uh, I try and add a link so that folks can go directly to the information. And then um, if anything else comes up during this call, it's, it's a little bit easier to track and I, I'll try and find the links if there's new things in the notes and things like that. So, um, but that's that's just it. It was mostly selfish for, for me to be able to find things later. So Wes, did, uh, did Anna capture the, the latest advisories? Yeah, I can just give a brief overview. Stevens Creek was updated. The first one uh, was created in 2009 or released in 2009. It then added two species, common carp and sack sucker. And then a big uh, whole group effort was the statewide being updated. Yeah. And that involved uh, an overhaul of our whole way of doing it versus the last one, which was released in 2013. And then because of that change in uh, procedure, we could add seven species, which were crappie, goldfish, inland silverside, pike minnow, sack sucker, striped bass, and threadfin shad. Yeah, and that's about Great. it. Thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, this reminds me that um, another thing that's going on with the 2021 20, sampling is that uh, we work closely with OEHA to uh, make decisions about how we analyze the samples. Autumn is our uh, tissue coordinator master and uh, consults with, with me and OEHA to, to work out the details of, of how we analyze the samples. So um, thanks Wes and OEHA for 
continuing to provide the detailed input on that. Yeah, no problem. And then before we keep going, I see uh, Shannon has their hand up. Shannon? Great. Just one last shout out from OEHA. Thanks so much, Wes and Anna. Um, so just wanted to let you know that uh, we are marching through that 2009 document that contains advisories for you know upwards of 15 to 20 uh, water bodies. And just another thank you to Gary and company and all of the rest of you that are analyzing the data, catching the fish, getting out there, braving the, uh, the elements, because as we um, update our older existing advisories, we are able to not only do that, but integrate new species because of all the wonderful data efforts that are coming online. So if you're having a rough day, please don't think the efforts are in vain because we're keeping <laughs> up on top of that along with adding new advisories to the list. So thanks so much. So you might see some oldies, but goodies, but uh, making a second appearance such as Stevens Creek. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Shannon. OK, TMDL updates. No, I, um, uh, Lauren Smitherman couldn't be at the meeting today, but she gave us a heads up and uh, said that Robin could could um, tell us about the TMDL development. Yeah, we are continuing to make progress on the uh, review of the Delta Mercury TMDL, and and the Rivers TMDL has been on hold and it's continued to be on hold until basically we have. Um, more manpower after we complete the Delta review. Okay, great. Any other TMDL news to note? Hey, I can see people now. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> Hi, Anna. All right. Um, not hearing any other TMDL news, so we'll go to the monitoring council. Is that you, Anna, or Nick? Uh, ideally, Nick, if 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 he's on. Sure. Surprise. Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Um, so yeah, we had a meeting on August 12th, a council meeting. I had been gone for the the majority of that quarter on paternity leave, so it was mainly uh, a agenda developed by. Um, Chair Mogus, and it involved a lot of just updates. The video of that recording is um, on the council's YouTube page if you're interested. Um, there was a great update provided by Anna on the Data Science Symposium and a lot of the um, uh, equity and, and justice, diversity, and inclusion work that was done at that event. And there was a, a lengthy conversation um, that came from there that was um, kind of uh, sorry, I got distracted by the sound. Um, so that, that that discussion led into a um, a reinvigoration or a revisiting of a subcommittee or a committee of the council that was started back at the end of 2020, early 2021, which was focused on those um, values of justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion, and had not met in some time. But um, there was an update from Shelley Walther, um, who has helped that group in the past. I think Anna is helping with that group quite a bit to talk about um, and think about how we can incorporate um, those values and actions into the work that's being done at the council and uh, revolving around water quality as a whole. This work group is probably more of a poster child for thinking about that and and um, and something for other work groups to learn from. So. Um, we talked about the safety work group and how um, forward thinking and how we're trying to incorporate through the reconfiguration and the and um, all of the work that you guys are doing related to um, bringing in um, voices that have in the past not been heard. So um, there's definitely a motivation at the council level and trying to figure out how best they can be involved and and educate themselves and educate the work groups and try to think about how we can be more action oriented within the work we do. Um, I think that's all I can think of. The next meeting is in November. Um, we're working at filling in some new seats. We uh, added a public health seat, um, which we're working to fill. Um, so we'll have the CDPH, which would be a great resource to have, especially with some pending legislation. Um, there's AB 1066, which is out there 
um, uh, that's supposed to basically create an inland monitoring program for uh, primary recreating sites where people swim inland on inland waters, which is to this point been pretty much unprotected. So that's a huge. We're hoping for that that name to council um, as a person to help define what those beaches look like. So that could be a huge step forward and help fill some of the gaps. And so we're looking forward to that. But um, I'll stop rambling now. But if you have questions, feel free to direct them to me. Great summary, Nick. Thanks. Um, sounds like somebody's like brushing their dog or something, <laughs> or their teeth. I don't know. Um, and I think I'll turn it over to you for the next few bullets. Awesome. Yeah, so just wanted to make everyone aware that A, we have a relevant literature resources page and we've added some um, some things to check out. So big thanks to Carrie for pointing this uh, this paper my way. There's the, the DOI, so you can go directly to the, the publisher um, without going to the website. but um, definitely relevant to the work that we all do. So um, this one is now posted and we've been talking a lot over the past couple meetings about a recent marine pollution bulletin publication. And so we provided a link um, to that guy on the relevant literature and resources page. Um, yeah, so another great example, you know, the names on, on the author list here are very familiar to many of us. So great work team and um, definitely take a look at the at the publication when you get a chance. Yeah, not, not I mean, this is super relevant because this is, you know, this is one of our products. So um, um, I haven't actually looked on the, on the website, but we should make sure that this goes into that section of the bioaccumulation monitoring page where we have the coast and ocean reports yeah we can we can link to the the publishers uh page for sure right 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 yeah and then just if you come across other papers that you think are uh relevant and helpful you know white papers scientific literature any other type of resource like that that you think um the, this work group would be interested in having as a reference please you know send me a link let me know um, and I can, you know, get that posted up there as well. So we can really build ourselves a, a library of resources that we can all kind of tap into and, and reference. Um, let's see. Oh, so at the last meeting we talked about, oh, Shannon, I see your question. Let's see. The web address for the new literature resources page, um, it's a long one, <laughs> but, so I'm not going to state the whole URL, but there will be links to it in the notes um, and in the, um, I believe it was, it was linked in the agenda, and then I'll also post these slides, and so you'll be able to link to it, and then you know, Chad's reading my brain, so thanks Chad for posting that link. Um, so we spoke last meeting about rebranding what we formerly were, the Bioaccumulation Oversight Group. The impetus for that was to make the work group more accessible and digestible to folks that don't eat, sleep, and breathe bioaccumulation work like we do. And so um, we just kind of realigned ourselves with the other water quality monitoring council work group names like Safe to Drink, um, and so we are now the Safe to Eat work group. Um, and we've got a lot of web pages and we've done our best here to kind of find all of the references and switch them over, but um, we're human, <laughs> not perfect. So if you see something um, that is a clear reference to, you know, current work, but uh, using our old boggy acronym, um, let me know and I, we can get that fixed up so that the public and others, um, yeah, can just be a little bit more, feel like they can approach the work group more. So that's happened. Um, the next is other outreach materials. So we've been talking about, um, again, wanting to 
be more approachable and engage with members of the public, community-based organizations, tribal governments that we haven't necessarily reached out to or partnered with before. And so we've developed um, a couple of outreach materials, the one on the left. And again, these are links to the, the PDFs of, of documents. This is actually a booklet that um, has you know, high level information about what we do in the, in the field. Um, and we've printed out a couple hundred copies and actually shipped them to field crews so that as they're approached by anglers or members of the public that are curious and wanna know more, they can hand them this resource. And so that's the first time we're doing this, we're testing it out. We'll kind of debrief after the sampling season and see how it went and potentially you know, future iterations improve the resource, but that's there. Um, we haven't posted that on the website yet. I'm currently working with our um, graphics unit here at the Water Board to basically make a series of one pagers. So the reason why this is a booklet is because it's translated into um, seven different languages. Because again, language access is, is a real limitation for some folks. So we're working on making one pagers, one in each language with the exact same information, but that um, those resources can be downloaded from the website if you're not on the field. And then the um, fact sheet on the right is a draft. It will be zhuzhed up uh, with our graphics team and translated, but we um, have presented this in the, in the past couple meetings and thanks to those who provided feedback. Um, and so at this point, we have sent it off for translation. And then I will again be working with our graphics team to, um, you know, up, there's <laughs> this, um, this graphic here. I don't expect you to write, read anything. I can barely read it and I'm right here, um, but describes the process, generally speaking, um, of bioaccumulation and, you know, what, what we do as, as a work group and what the bioaccumulation monitoring program is and how we work together to do the great work that we're, um, that we work tirelessly on <laughs> year after year. Um, and so that will be uh, updated and the aesthetics will be improved. So it has the same feel as uh, this resource on the left here. And then you'll also notice this little fish that's on the top um, of these resources. That is Bardo, it's our, our team mascot. Um, and I like to call him Bardo, your friendly bioaccumulation buddy. So if you want to like make that go viral, you know, let's do it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, so those are our outreach materials. Once those are done, um, you know, we want to continue the conversation and keep making resources for um, folks that are impacted by bioaccumulation, but may not be researchers of bioaccumulation. So if you have any other ideas, or um, you think of things that we could potentially pursue in the future, we'd love to hear your thoughts um, and we can bring it up at a future, future meeting. So those are in progress. And that's all I have. I have a burning question. Yes. Um, where did the name Bardo come from? Yeah, so um, Bardo means water in a couple of different languages. Hmm. Um, and I can, I actually think one cool thing that we could do is give Bardo his own page to talk about the origin of that name hmm. um, and, you know, how it was developed, you know, instead of uh, fins, he's got a graph of data. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Bardo means water in a series of languages and um, I can find more and add those to the notes as well. <laughs> Just curious. That's good, a good, good, re good, good. Uh origin of that name perfect yeah. yeah all right well we're doing well on our 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 time schedule today so does anybody else have any other updates feel free to uh raise your hand if you can so we prevent over talking or adding a question or comment in the chat it's in the Okay, I cut out there for like two seconds, but I'm back. Welcome back. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> um, okay, well, I think we're ready for the next item. Awesome, let's do it.
All right, so we're revisiting for the 2016 Lakes Data Report. And um, again, we talked about this at our last meeting, um, but I didn't have, there were, I found some, some issues in the, in the data that was being displayed. It wasn't all displaying completely. So some of the graphics weren't ready, um, but I, we saw, we debugged everything and, and got all the figures uh, completed. And then I got the draft out on August 3rd and asked for comments by the end of this week. Um, the idea being that um, if, you know, if you haven't had a chance to look at it before today, we can discuss comments and talk about how to resolve them. So that's our desired outcome, getting a, you know, a group agreement on resolving the comments and finalizing the report. Um, next slide. So uh, I, for, for the for reference, I've just kept the slides from last time and then folded in some new ones. So I'm not going to I'm going to go very quickly and kind of basically skip some of these slides because we talked about them last time. But it's handy for me when you know when I look back and on, on what was presented at this time, you know, at this meeting in the in 2021 um, to have sort of the complete slide deck here. So I uh, that, that's why why I'm going to go through things the way I am, and so I'll just very quickly you know talk about this one that you know, this sampling was uh, aiming to fill data gaps in terms of lakes that had hadn't been sampled yet, and then lakes where the regions wanted to get more data um, for a 303D listing or advisory development. Uh, next slide. So I'm not going to talk about this one. This is just for reference, future reference. Next slide. And then just noting, I, I have control of the slide, so I get to slow Jay down. Um, just noting okay. that if you do have questions, uh, you want us to go over th something, you can add a question to the chat or raise your hand, but also that there is a recording of the last meeting and notes on all of these things posted on the web. So um, you can kind of get more details on what we covered there. Thanks, Anna. And we uh, we measured prey fish and selenium. This was the uh, towards the early days when we started doing this uh, um, routinely. Next slide. Uh, the location map. I'm not going to spend time on this one. Okay. Um, so this figure hasn't changed, but uh, it. To, so that uh, this presentation, um, you, uh, anyone interested can you know, connect the dots to the report. Uh, the the color coding is a little different. So I've included the new graph in here, but uh, we've talked about this before. Next slide. Okay, now this is a, a, uh, a, a new slide. Uh, it's from the report, figure 4A. And this, I like these graphs because they show the entire data set across all the different species and then the distributions of results for each species. Um, so you can see um, you know, which species had relatively high levels and which species had relatively low levels and how intensively we sampled each species. Um, so in terms of sampling effort, uh, um, as usual, largemouth bass is a primary focus. They're widely distributed. They're a great indicator for mercury, uh, high in the food chain, and they accumulate relatively high concentrations. Um, so we collected a lot of largemouth bass, analyzed them as individuals. Um, we also, uh, in some lakes, we can't get largemouth, but other black bass are present. So smallmouth bass and spotted bass are other black bass species that are very similar to largemouth and also good indicators. Um, so that's where uh, we focus our effort. Um, bluegill is another species that um, we, we uh, it's kind of a secondary indicator for mercury that we get pretty widely. Um, 
but it, they're lower in the food chain, so they tend to accumulate uh, lower concentration. I see your hand. Yeah, I just wanted to know if these are the um, 350 millimeter normalized numbers, or are these the raw data? These are the raw data. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I think that details in the caption in the report. I didn't copy the whole thing over. Um, it's actually not. Oh, okay. Uh, well, that's something I should I should add to the caption. I'm I'm just making a note of that. Okay. Thanks, Autumn. Um, and then in terms of uh, concentration, so one of the problems in the last, when I was getting ready to present last time was that we didn't have all the pike minnow data in there. And um, there was um, one lake, um, I think it was Lake Spalding, where we, um, uh, we didn't get, I don't think we got black bass, but um, pike minnow is another um, high trophic level predator species that accumulate, that can accumulate high mercury concentrations. And, you know, in this case, they accumulated exceptionally high mercury concentrations, uh, but we only had pike minnow from one lake and that, that lake had high mercury in the food web. So that's why the, the, the mean, which is shown by the bar, uh, is very high for pike minnow. Um, we've only, for the for the largemouth bass, the length adjusted largemouth bass, um, we've only had a couple of lakes that are over 1.5, and we've sampled over 190. Um, so this is a high concentration. Um, we got striped bass, another high trophic level species that can accumulate high mercury, but we only got it at one, only got one sample of striped bass, and it was relatively high. Um, so that's a quick overview of the sport fish um, data. Next slide. And I, I've got a similar graph for the prey fish. And uh, it shows, you know, it shows the species and the distributions for each species and the means. And um, the, the um, pertinent threshold here is 0.05 parts per million. That's the, the um, statewide uh, mercury objective for prey fish and um, in the report we uh, provide the information on how many of the samples were above that so 35 34 percent of the samples were at 0.05 or greater um, this graph is a little deceiving because when the mercury concentrations are at this low end of the um, the, the range of detection near the detection limit, uh, we round things off to 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03. Um, and so there are actually a lot, a lot of these dots have multiple observations, represent multiple observations. Um, but we had uh, um, 70 some samples of prey fish and I think 20, 26 were above at 0.05 or above. Okay, next slide. Noting in the chat that Autumn, um, well, since we're talking about the chat, Carrie uh, said that Region 2 read through the report and doesn't have any comments. Sherry, I'd love for us to circle back to your comment in the discussion portion. So uh, we'll circle back to that. And then Autumn noting that the report figure 4A caption does specify composite and individual concentrations rather than 350 millimeter, millimeter normalized. Great. Great. Thanks, Anna. <clears throat> yeah. um, so this map I showed last time, I'll just skip over it. Uh, we I showed this last time and it, has, and it hasn't changed, but this is showing that that overall distribution of of 190 lakes that I just mentioned, and shows you know this is for length adjusted largemouth bass and shows that only a couple of lakes have have exceeded one point or one lake has exceeded 1.5, another lake has gotten close. So again, that that Sacramento pike minnow 
value was was um, in the 99th percentile. But that's all I'll say about this. And then um, for lakes where we've where we've sampled in the past, um, there's there's a series of graphs um, showing the, the 2016 data and in comparison, uh, providing a comparison to the past. And um, so there's there's um, you know I show a graph for for every lake that has this type of information. I'm only showing a couple of the lakes here. But uh, we tend to see, in general, very consistent uh, results over you know, the over the years. Um, to me, it's kind of surprisingly consistent, but it shows that we've got a robust method, um, both in terms of the design where we do the length adjustment of the largemouth bass, and then that our our chemical analysis is is uh, highly reproducible and um, Good precision. So, um, in general, we you know, we see very consistent results over the years. It also is telling us that the environment in these water bodies is, and the factors that drive mercury and uh, accumulation in the food web are also generally consistent. So, next slide. Uh, and these graphs um, are different from last time. Uh, Chris, did you have a comment, question? Sorry, you're muted. I didn't do that, does it? Um, with respect to the last slide, one of the questions I had, you know, when I, in my comments in the report, um, you did the 350 millimeter adjustments differently than you did in the past. Does you just use linear regression? Um, previously, you would use you know the procedure that you shared with me, which is a two-step thing. So, my guess is that these represent the means and uh, of, of the adjusted concentrations for the samples in that year for the individual fish. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah we used the. You know, this is. Uh, Kind of, you know, in the in the technical weeds, but um, you know, we're, Chris is here to make sure that we're technically sound. So I'll, that's why you pay me so much. Yeah, I'll go there a little bit. Um, so yeah, we, it, you know, this is a basically an analysis of covariance and uh, the the brief the you know there's a the preferred way of doing analysis of covariance is to pool your data and then um, you know do an, an, an you know do your ANOVA on the whole data set um, but we found that implementing that um, when you're comparing different sets of data it gets really awkward over time you know as we're continually adding new new data and um, and it you know with every time you in, fold new data into the data set your your means are going to change so in order to have sort of independent uh you know data data points that we in, and by data point i'm referring to the means the means that we can com compare um over the or, you know across years and for different groups of of water bodies it's better to just you know do do the uh, regressions independently um, and so, you know, we can report a solid value that doesn't change um, based Thank on. Thank you. Yeah. What it, remember, what it, what it asked in my in my comment was rationale question mark. That right. that was unclear to me. I saw that it changed, but there was no explanation. I was not sure. You know, I, this process I understood because I used it. You sent it to me, <laughs> and. Right. Uh, and I did notice in the in the report that it changed. Thank you. That's what, that's all I needed to know. Yeah, and I th yeah, I think you you're it's a good comment, and I should add some more explanation to the text. Okay, so these graphs did change a little bit. Um, uh, just getting you know all the data included, and um, uh, you know there's some interesting. 
you know, we're, we're slowly getting a, a, an understanding of variation from, from year to year. The long-term Bass Lake Monitor is going to give us this, but um, we started the Bass Lake Monitoring in 2015, and then um, and then this was kind of a you know another um, you know uh, non-random set of lakes that we analyzed in 2016. But in general, we saw no change when we compared the 2016 data to past data. Um, that was the most common outcome. In 2015, uh, this shows the combined uh, uh, results for 2015 and 2016. And a lot of the lakes in 2015 had a significant decrease um, compared to previous data. Um, when you combine the 2015 and 2016, you know, there's a lot of no change and then a lot of decrease. Um, in 2017, um, we tended to see higher concentrations. So um, we are seeing, you know, there does seem to be some interannual variation and um, we're, we're slowly, you know, with each round, um, starting to get a better handle on that. Okay, next um, slide. Before we move on to the next slide, um, Shannon asks, can you please explain the zero in the figure legend for the figure eight bar graphs? Shannon, did Jay cover that? Did you wanna? Um, yeah, uh, thanks. Um, it just seems so for example in figure 8a um as i read this it's a total of seven lakes right so a one um one is an increase uh five is no change and one is a decrease that's all clear and that agrees with the narrative in the report but in the um text above it says number of bass lakes monitored with significant increases to me the zero i don't understand what that means it caused confusion for us it should as yeah. we read it just increases no change or significant decreases the zero just was confusing especially it, it just didn't make sense why it was there so just with a clarification yeah um that i think that you know i i have to confess that i cut and paste when i prepare these reports and <laughs> i think that was a holdover from the 2015 report uh where there i don't think there were any increases so that should be deleted so Thanks that for makes that. total sense. Thanks so yes. much. And then Carrie asks if there is a plan for a 10 year report. Um, yes, um, I think that will be a great time to uh, uh, you know, assess the five panels worth of data and to, to do some interpretation and some discussion of things like the interannual variation and potential drivers of that. So um, that's you know further out into our next contract period, but but yes, that is on the on the on the in the in the long term plan. In the long term plan, can you just remind us what year for that ten year report? Um, it would be uh, let's see. Um, Probably Pam five is in twenty three. Yeah, so probably early twenty twenty five. I haven't really, you know, set that down on paper yet, but that's that's my uh, what I anticipate right now, off the top of my head. Okay, uh, let's go on to the next slide. So yeah, let's get to let's. Keep keep going. We'll get to the comments slide. Okay, so I've um, thanks to those who have commented, um, and uh, thanks Carrie for adding your comments in the chat. Uh, I've gotten a lot of helpful uh, feedback um, that will help clean up the report. Uh, you know. I want to thank Carrie also for pointing out that I didn't include the figures in tables when I sent the report out <laughs> uh, on August 5th. Um, so hopefully that didn't slow anybody down, but we got those out with the agenda. Um, uh, so in terms of comments on the text, um, I've gotten a lot of helpful uh, notes on various errata, uh, 
clarifications that are needed, grammatical suggestions. Um, one of the clarification examples is uh, I use the term and sometimes interchangeably. I need that. Uh, Chad provided some some interesting uh, background information on, on Region 9 lakes. And then um, one of the questions that, that Chris posed um, in the process of reading the report uh, is whether we've considered non-lethal sampling. Um, so I wanted to talk about that a little bit. And um, we have talked about this in the past, uh, but I, it was several years ago, I, I think. I'm pretty sure you, Chris, you brought it up at that point too. Um, and um, you know, I, you know this. Uh, so this is he, uh, Chris is referring to the uh, uh, another approach for getting uh, tissue from largemouth bass species that are you know that are large enough is to just take a, a plug of their muscle tissue and analyze that. You don't really need a ton of tissue for mercury and, and selenium analysis. Um, when we do organics analysis, we do need more tissue, so the plug, plug approach won't work. Uh, but for a lot of the fish, we're, um, uh, you know, we, we look at organics in largemouth bass sometimes, but uh, usually we don't. So um, looking at muscle plugs is you know, is a potential approach just in terms of, um, you know, theoretical, uh, you know, technically that we could get good data from the, from doing that kind of approach. I think it it really boils down to the logistics of doing that. And um, uh, Autumn, I wanted to see what what your thoughts were on that. OK. Um so we have, as Jay said, we've talked about this uh, quite a bit, not only for this project, but others as well. And um, for some projects, it works for some species and some it doesn't. So um, right off the top of my head, my first, my first thought is, you know, as being part of the university, we are required to have um, approval for our protocols from the Institutional Animal Care and Use Committee, or IACUC. Um, and they have, so right now we even have uh, IACUC in place for our different sampling types. And basically they want to know that any animals that we're using are being handled in a humane way. Um, so we have very specific rules about how we're able to humanely euthanize the fish that we do now. If you've got um, an animal that you are hoping to survive whatever you do to it, um, things become a lot more difficult to get that. And I'm not certain, but it may actually require us to have a veterinarian on the boat. Um, also, from a logistics standpoint, um, we're talking about a lot of extra time in the field, and the field is by far your most expensive part of this. Um, the reason that would be so much more time is because now what we do is we collect all of our fish, make sure that they meet the size class requirements, um, and then uh, we humanely euthanize them according to our IACUC, and we do all of our measurements all at once. So we do um, a weight in the field, uh, uh, total length and fork length also in the field, um, but these are on fish that have already been euthanized, and so you're not handling them a lot. Um, and then um, to have to do that in on the boat uh, would be more time consuming actually out on the water, and so potentially you're going to get less actual fishing per day. Um, so it might actually price the whole Thing out of the game. We haven't really looked at that because I don't know how long it would take. Um, but now we're able to do that stuff in the laboratory. Um, and so sometimes actually when the field crews are really pressed for time, they actually bring the samples back to the lab to process them. Um, and you know, you're getting some really long days out there. I'm sure so you guys have done field work know that. Um, the other thing I wanted you guys to consider is one of the things that we're doing is we're taking scales for aging and we take them right behind the dorsal fin um, in order to to 
age the fish, we have to read a minimum of 10 scales. And in order to get 10 readable scales, we end up taking a lot more than that. Um, and those scales are there to protect the fish in various ways. So I don't know what the impact of that would be. I know that when you take a plug, you pack the wound with antibiotics. Um, I don't know, and maybe Chris, you know, um, is there a way to protect the now scaleless skin? <laughs> What we have found, and I've done probably a thousand myself by both plugs and blood and with biopsy needles um, and dealt with them in many ways, is that the less you do to the fish, the better off the fish is. Every time we've tried to do something to the wound other than let the fish go, we end up with more problems than we be, we we start with, and that includes, by the way, anesthetizing the fish. Um, I will add to your literature collection, you know, my work in this area. And the last one I worked on, uh, the state of Missouri has adopted our muscle plug procedure. Um, we worked on it, the smallmouth bass one that, we, that they use is mine. It was, uh, we developed it for the Park Service and the Missouri Department of Conservation. Um, who didn't want to whack that many smallmouth bass from the Ozark Riverways. Um, the second paper, um, the John Eckerson paper, and I'll send them both to you, um, includes a follow-up study that we did um, in a hatchery um, in, in Arkansas that includes uh, before and after pictures of the plug wounds and of the 60 fish that we included in the, in the study, we lost one control and one plugged fish. Um, we considered that good enough, and they've been using that technique ever since. Um, it was it was just a thought. I know we talked about it before, but having done it um, and having not to deal with you know coolers full of whole adult fish, um, once you once you figure out how to do it, and you get over the fact that you generate some solid waste in the in the in the process because the 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 punch samplers are disposables, you know, and there's a little bit of effort involved in on the front end also in in clean technique to be sure that those those plugs are very very small, and you have to be very very careful with respect to external contamination. Um, so there's some front end work that goes into um, the uh, the process in addition to the time um, in the field, but you know. We reached a point where you know we can do them. It doesn't take much longer than it takes to uh, um, to process the fish anyway. And the area, of the preferred place for the plug um, that we found and others as well, is exactly where you described that the scales come from, which is at the at the base of the second dorsal. Um, and that's ten is about how many scales we removed. That's exactly what we did. We take a little bit of take the knife, take the scales off, put them in a scale envelope, stick the punch in there, pull the, pull the thing out, um, weigh and measure the fish, and away it goes. Um, that, that's what we did, literally. Um, dispense the samples into uh, um, cryo vials, the very smallest one, and flash freeze them in. The, we, we froze them in the field right away. So instead of a fish, you end up with a cryo vial. Um, and yeah, you take a little bit more time in the field, but you don't have to, you know, you don't have to identify all those individual fish. Well, you don't do that if you're doing all that in the field, um, but the fish lives to swim away another day. Granted, we didn't have the, we were not affiliated with the university and uh, our institutional care and use committee, we have our own um, at the laboratory. They were good with it um, because they are cold vertebrates. Um, at least according to our agency, no veterinarian certification or oversight is necessary. That's in our in our way of doing business. That's only necessary for warm-blooded animals. Um, we had one anyway, and he was because um, he was working with the pellet sturgeon team, and they're better with this. Than, so we have a veterinarian anyway, and he was good with it. I'll just send it to you. It was uh, this way beyond the scope of. In fact, I didn't even expect it to come up in this discussion. If you want, I think we should have an offline conversation about it.
and talk about it some more. It was just an idea. You handle a lot of fish and just the, the sheer bulk of and volume of fish. Oh, and then you don't have to store all those fish in your walk-in freezer or wherever you put them um, until you get ready to process them. Um, just a thought and and let's move on. Jay, I will send you the okay. information and we can talk about it some other time. Okay, yeah, we'll look over your information and uh, give it some consideration. Um, it's definitely a worthy cause to, you know, not, you know, if, if we could not sacrifice the fish and still, you know, have it um, be uh, an efficient process and, um, you know, get us good data, then it would, it would, we would, we would do that. Um, so we'll consider it. It looks like uh, Shannon has her hand up, but then after that, I, for the sake of time, I think we should keep moving. So Shannon, go ahead. Thanks. Just real quick. So Jay, I'll send um, the OEHA comments in the three PDF documents back to you via email. Just wanted to flag a couple things on page seven of the report. The last paragraph, it talks about um, 2017 in two places. I believe that should be 2016. Yeah. Um, so just to flag, just to make sure we didn't miss something. And then on page nine, under organic contaminants, the second paragraph, you talk about DDTs and dildren, and then you just give a concentration with no chemical. I think that should be chlorga chlordanes. Right. So just want to make sure of that. Um, in the cruise report in the first two pages, one paragraph is listed twice. Um, so that was just a quick thing there. And then my last actual question is on the tables document, tables 3A and 3B. Um, this is just for our information. Um, we noticed that the min and uh, max and median, not me mean, but median lengths are mentioned. We were just curious, um, why did you list, why, why is it relevant to get the median versus the mean length? Hmm. Um, I, I have to go back and look at that. Okay. Yeah, but th thanks, thanks for the comments. Yeah, it doesn't impact us either way. Just we we're just curious why that's a value and be good to know. So thanks. Okay. I'll, I'll email these to you. Thanks so much. Great. Thank you. All right. Yeah, so we are a little behind schedule. So in terms of wrapping this up, um, any other final comments, um, please get them to me by Friday and then I'll revise the report. And one of the probably the biggest step will be making it accessible. <laughs> Um, so that's on my list. And then I'm going to aim for having the, the report finalized by the end of September. I'm not totally sure about that, given other things on my plate as well and how much time the accessibility is going to take. But uh, that's going to be my goal. But if not, not then, then probably mid-October. And that's about it for that. So uh, did anybody else have any other, you know, just to, to give me a heads up, any other comments on the report? Okay. Um, and you know you can still send them in to me by Friday if you want. Still need to look at it and want to provide any more comments. Okay. Jay, since I'm this is Susan with EWG. I just since I'm just new to this, um, I'll take a look at it and uh, and see if we have any comments and let you know. We may okay. need a few more days besides the 27th, but I'll try to get to as soon as possible. Okay, if uh, if you do want to provide comments and need a little more time, just let me know. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, onward. Awesome. Thanks, Jake, and all for that great discussion. Um, some key updates for the realignment. Um, we had our first meeting back in June. I gave, I think, an update. Um, I guess I didn't because our last meeting was in May. Um, the meeting went really well. Um, we're, I'm working on including more tribal perspectives and representatives into the process um, and actually making some headway on that this week. The second meeting will be held on September 1st, so uh, next week. And the first meeting was really just kind of getting to know each other and figuring out the different expertise that people are really looking forward to bringing to the process. Um, and high level, you know, uh, concerns that, that and objectives that folks wanted to kind of see addressed or discussed throughout this um, long term process. On September 1st, we are um, planning on prioritizing the discussion around 
areas of water bodies of concern, species of concern, and pollutants. And that really is um, because we need to figure out where we're going to sample so that we can get, um, you know, permits and, and things like that ready for sampling next year. Um, our goal, my goal is to have a general uh, sampling plan complete by the October meeting um, and so that we can plan for sampling and then future discussions will be, you know, around um, how we can do better to communicate our results um, and, you know, advisories and things like that with the folks that actually consume fish and shellfish, um, in, in this case, the San Diego region. Um, Sherry, great. Uh, Sherry has a list of tribes and just in the realignment. Um, and we'll be, we'll be circling back to talk about that more. And um, the other slide, I think the big takeaway is, you know, the whole point of this is to really connect with, engage with, build trust and partnership with communities and um, tribal governments in the region so that we can uh, be sure that the folks consuming fish and shellfish um, are doing so safely and they, they can make informed decisions. Um, so we wanna talk to all those folks. Um, and so we're doing our best to increase engagement and um, you know, relationship building does take time. It's taking a lot longer than um, we initially anticipated, which is okay. This is um, a learning process for all of us. And so um, one thing that I would like to do is if, um, as, as Sherry has pointed out, if you know of folks that would be interested in participating in future region regional efforts, I'd love to start making those connections and, and building that relationship now so that um, when we're ready to be in that region, whatever it is, folks are kind of know what's happening and, and ready to go um, so that we can um, have, you know, dive right into in-depth discussion and, and um, all, that, all that good stuff. And so um, if you're interested in participating or you know of folks, please send them my way. I will say that we already have certain, uh, you know, swamp regional coordinators or others that have reached out and expressed their interest. Those uh, are on the starred uh, regions on the map. So region nine is kind of obvious. That's where we're starting. So they're definitely interested, um, San Diego region. But we've also heard from, um, you know, region three, two, and five. And that's not to say that the other regions are not interested. I just either haven't heard from them directly or maybe I have and I forgot. So <laughs> if you have talked to me and you feel like a star should be somewhere else, um, please let me know. And that's, that's all I have for the realignment. Are there any um, questions on that before we move on? And again, as Jay mentioned at uh, the top of today's meeting, this will be a standing item. So, um, you know, in, in the next meeting, we'll hopefully dive more into the sampling um, plan in general and, and things like that. And I think yeah, I'll yeah. add a bit for people that uh, I'm getting uh, a big echo. Uh, Not sure why. Uh, for the people that are, are haven't heard about this before, the meetings that you referred to are down in the San Diego region because that's where we're starting. So uh, Anna's gotten a nice group, you know, initial group together, uh, to you know, with tribal representatives and and others, and uh, that those that's what that's what those meetings are about. So they're focused on San Diego. Yeah, thanks for that clarification, Jay. And um, we're starting there, but the goal, the long-term goal and vision is to have a similar process through all regions. Um, so um, yeah, it's a long-term long -term plan. Great. Okay, and then if you think of questions later on, uh, feel free to reach out to myself or Jay and we can, we can circle back. So for um, review of action items, 
uh, for the quick updates, these are what I anticipated <laughs> might be action items, um, but we can um, add, you know, talk about adding more and then those will be reflected in the notes. So for everyone, if you see a, a BOG reference on the web page, please email me uh, the location so we can uh, get that fixed, except for on the first page, we, you know, BOG has been a part of our history. So we're not erasing it forever, just acknowledging that that was um, our name previously, and now we are the Safety Support Group. Again, if you'd like additional resources to be added to the relevant literature play page, please send them my way. Um, and I will work on finalizing the online versions of the Angler booklet and fact sheet. And when those are up and posted, I'm sure we'll, we'll be able to send out a, an email to the email list um, to let you all know. Was there anything else on action items that we wanted to? Think about an ad for quick updates. Don't think so. Okay. For so, um, I just saw a comment. When will the technical report start using Stu? Starting with the 2019 report, um, it'll probably be future publications. So um, that's a great question. And we will, uh, thanks for bringing it up, Shannon. Uh, so the question, sorry, I read it to myself. And for those of you that cannot see the chat, the question is, uh, when will the technical report start using Stu, potentially starting with 2019? Um, and so, yeah, we'll figure out when that makes sense as the reports come up and, um, and yeah. make those choices. Yeah, we'll consider doing that for the 2019 report. Yeah. For the 2016 um, lakes report, again, if you have any final comments, um, please get them to Jay by August 27th. As he mentioned, you know, not only the finalizing the comments, but accessibility is going to take some time. So um, we want to be sure we get to that sooner rather than later. And Nick, I see your hands up. Hi, oh, yeah, thanks. I just had a question um, about the realignment and, and maybe if that's where this work is being done um, or if it's being done at all in another venue. Um, regarding the legislation that was passed about fish advisories and where to be where to be posting those, is that being done within the realignment scope or is that being done elsewhere? As in, like um, just to clarify, as an ask speaking with community groups and, and our advisory committee about where they should be posted, that sort of conversation? Is that yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. I feel like, um, okay, good. Because I just wasn't thinking about, you know, it'd be nice maybe to hear at a, at a future meeting or the next meeting, just talking about how this group could be leveraged to help with that kind of piece, that big piece of the puzzle on how to best. Um, I know we have the flyer and the surveys up next year, but um, getting kind of the overall progress update on that would be, would be cool. Yeah, that's definitely um, going to be part of the conversation during our meetings, probably next year when we really focus, you know, while the sampling is happening, we still want to reconvene um, and and connect and continue relationship building. And so the conversations will be less on uh, where and what should we sample and more on um, how should we interpret and communicate the interpretation of results, um, you know, Reports are an oldie but goodie, right? But like anglers aren't necessarily going to be reviewing our 2019 report before they go fishing, right? Which is why consumption surveys or um, advisories are so great. But if there are other ways for us to communicate that, and then the where for posting will definitely be brought up in those conversations. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks. Um, another action item for the lakes report is to distribute the final report to the work group. Um, I, was September 30th the, the goal? And then we'll, yeah. Yeah. okay, great. And then I will work with Jay to post the final accessible report online on the lake and reservoir page. Were there any other action items other than comment revisions that we wanted for, for the lakes data report? For the realignment, again, um, long-term 
process. So if you contact me, I'm not going to respond and say, great, let's meet next week to <laughs> plan all the things. Um, it will be a, a long-term conversation and, and relationship building process. So if you're interested in, in starting that sooner rather than later, um, please feel free to reach out. And again, I'll provide updates at a future work group. And then did someone unmute want to say something? Okay, must have been just uh, feedback. Great. It might have been me. My internet went out again, but I'm back. That's how everyone knows we're not robots, Jay. We have technical problems. Um, so, yeah. So, we also want to be sure, and we'll kind of, the next slide, we'll talk about future meeting topics. But, um, you know, we are really trying to be intentional about um, when and why we gather as a working group and a bioaccumulation community. So, if there are topics or speakers that you would like to hear about at future meetings, please let us know. And then um, I will be working with, with Jay and others to summarize the conversations um, that we had today on a notes document, as well as posting um, a PDF of this presentation and the recording on the, on the website, the meetings page. And then when all that's up and ready for uh, your perusal, we will send out an email. Any other action items? Or was that was I good at my um, <laughs> estimation when I put this together? Uh, so we're we're going to look at the literature. Or Chris is going to send us literature, and we're going to review that and consider the you know the possibility of plug sampling. So for the next meeting in October, we've got the, the usual suspects in terms of meeting items. We want to, um, it, we'll have an update on the 2021 sampling. We'll discuss it with more detail, planning for 2022 and beyond. I'll give a brief realignment update, but we still have a little bit of time. So if there are other topics that people want to kind of elevate now for us to consider for the next meeting, please let us know. And just as a heads up, I think we'll, we may spend more than 20 minutes on the 2021 update. Um, yeah. I think it'd be a good, you know, this is another sort of challenging year with all the chaos going on and with drought and fire. Uh, so getting a sort of full report on how things went and then thinking about what that means for the future would be good and then um, probably a little more time talking about the we'll need to nail down the plan for 2022 um, so that we can get the permit application in so i think we'll you know we'll need to have some good discussion on that too great okay uh, and then, um, Anna, just uh, just to be uh, sort of uh, co comprehensive, um, and I was cutting out again when Nick was talking, but um, I think the um, you know what to do about the fish advisory legislation. I think this I think this group has a role in in poten potential role in providing input on that. So um, uh, you know, this like having the Having the the San Diego you know group that we've got together is or the regional groups that we have together provide input is good, but um, there might be a role. For, I think there's probably a role for this group as well, which you know we've got a we high at these meetings and we've got you know sort of the statewide perspective at these meetings. Yeah, totally agree. And then I just uh, remembered that I said we were going to circle back to Sherry's comments, so I'd like to do that now. And so um, about an hour ago, Sherry posted in the chat that the newly formed Tribal Marine Stewards Network um, with tribal environmental departments are interested in receiving a report on the ocean coast sampling um, in 2020 and sampling steps and protocols. And Sherry's asking who from OEHA or SFEI or this group might be the best for those kind of trainings. And so if there, we can take a minute to kind of think about that now, Sherry, if there's 
you're still on and there's anything else you wanted to add there? Um, yeah. Um, so I work, the organization, for those of you who know us, we've been working on tribal beneficial uses, TMDLs, et cetera, for a long time. We are the um, administration body for the Tribal Marine Stewards Network. So that's the ocean work. And then there, there's only five tribes or sorry, four tribes involved in that and that group, but we work with the tribes up and down the coast um, and the ocean plan update, those kinds of things. So one of the pieces is, is that tribal environmental departments are are collecting data, but ha not, not all of them with exception Clear Lake tribes and for example, Yurok and um, have been engaged in providing data, but the others have not. And so I just was texting with Sarah Ryan from Big Valley Rancheria and saying, hey, do we want to put together some sort of a training? And I'm thinking it would be it would be really nice if it was an interagency and tribal uh, training for the tribes that are getting ready to embark on this to make sure that they're on the same page with you guys already with how you're doing your data sampling. And I know that like Gary, uh, our organization went out with Gary one time. Jay, thanks for setting that up. But uh, we'd like to duplicate that so that the tribal environmental directors have that information. So that's where I'm at. And Sarah's down. She wants to help. We just need to set up the rest of the team. Well, and I'll respond. I think uh, I, I I think it'd be good for me to 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 help with that. And yeah, you know, I I sort of provide the the broader design uh, mm -hmm. uh, strategies. Um, it would be good for Autumn to participate because she <clears throat> has you know can provide. Uh, detailed knowledge about the sampling and analysis and all the, you know, data, the sample, you know, sa the, the tissue handling and, and as well as data, the data side of things. So Autumn would be great. And then, um, you know, uh, we might, you know, OER might be good too, but kind of depends on what your, what the goal of the, of the, the meetings would be. I think oh, it'd be well. nice to move it from like what you're talking about is the design and the planning all the way through to how to gather the fish in such a way that you're doing it so, so it's just scientifically useful you know wearing your gloves and getting mm -hmm. the fish on ice and how long it takes to ship it and we've had experience mm -hmm. shipping it on a friday never a good idea right. um little things like that and then moving into um the um Oweha piece and then also sarah's talked about getting information into seeden because tribes work on the federal level um this the state you know, how do we make sure that, our, that the data tribes are collecting is useful? I mean, I recently contact, we're working on uh, Cache Creek on a project and recently contacted tribes there that I heard had been sampling only to find out that their data sets were well over 10 years old. So we needed a resample, you know, little things like that. I would really like to put together some kind of training and perhaps we could record it so it could be useful later mm -hmm. um, for other tribes that come on board. Mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, you know, the Stu is a, is a, a work group jointly of the, <laughs> the swamp program and the monitoring council and this is exactly the kind of activity that we should do as our in our council role um, coordinating with other programs and helping to make sure other programs are generating high quality and usable data is you know one, one of the things that that we want to do in our council role so so this sounds um, we're happy to help with it and i think probably maybe jennifer from the state board or um I'm not sure who else from the state board uh, would be good to include, but probably one or you know, at least somebody from the state board. Yeah, so Tessa said that they could definitely help with the training on getting data into Seedon. Um, and so I will, for an action item for me, um, and this is also something that the you know, bioaccumulation monitoring program in our um, strategic plan is to consider trainings that would be useful. Um, so this is definitely something that we would love to pursue. Um, Wes, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't want to cut in. I think we would uh, definitely be happy to uh, give some kind of overview of advisory development and get into more of the weeds there. So it'd be great to be involved with that. Yeah, let's build something together. Elise has been working with a lot of her agencies with different staff people over the time, but since Elise, Ujihara, and Margie have left, we haven't been as engaged as before, and it'd be really nice to brush us all up. So I have Wes, Tessa, Jennifer, uh, Jay, the two members of your team, and then Anna, and maybe between all of us, we can figure out, and if anyone else has ideas, we could maybe we could put together a call or something, and maybe Anna, you can help me with that, or Jay's or someone else that's more appropriate. Yeah, I can I can um, take the lead on on putting that together. And it, 
it sounds like there's going to be a lot of information so it might be a training series <laughs> um so that people by the end of the day don't want to never think about fish ever again <laughs> um, so yeah we will we'll work on that together for sure um as an additional action item and then again respecting folks time we're hitting our 11 o'clock the 11 o'clock hour as we promised so um thanks for adding that comment into the chat and um Yes, Ali will also be included in, in the meeting and discussion. And um, so upcoming meetings, the next one up is October 27th. Um, we kind of, if you're on the, the email list, then you probably have a hold for 9.30 to 12.30. Um, but depending on the agenda, not all of the time will be used potentially. And so we will let you know as we get closer. Um, and then also during that meeting, we'll probably be, be um, talking about uh, the planning the meetings for 2022 as well. Um, if you aren't on the email list yet, I recommend you join so that you do get those email invitations and calendar invites and things like that. And then I think this is our, our last slide. So Jay, any closing thoughts before we hang up? Um, just on the tribal training uh, um, uh, effort, uh, I was volunteering Autumn. I just want to make sure Autumn is okay with that. Oh, absolutely. I can help with a lot of that, Sherry. Um, like Jay said, I handle all the logistics, both on the lab and the field side. Um, so, and I've worked with the Yurok tribe before. Um, I was looking, just looking for those data and I didn't come up with them really quick. But anyway, um, yeah, I'd be happy to participate. Great. Awesome. Cool. Great. Well, thank you so mm -hmm. much, everyone. Uh, you know, Cal there's a lot happening in California. Stay safe. Um, <laughs> and we look forward to seeing you all in October or connecting with you via email sooner than that. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.